Hello guys, time for another demo project from our team and this will be a special one. One of the biggest demo projects we have ever done for free on GitHub and a backstory is that I'm procrastinating on shooting that video for 4 months already. So this project from Upwork, I will get to it in a minute, but a bit of backstory, I've delegated that to colleague Marius to create that. And he did that in the GitHub I can show you four months ago. Because it's quite a big project, my idea was to create a course from it. And when I started to shoot videos step by step, I've shot three videos of me explaining the code of Marius and then I realized it's not really a right way to present the code that has been already written. The course should be writing the code, right? So I've changed my opinion and started shooting the course with me coding that in live mode. Then I shot three videos of that and realized that me coding that video will estimate at around 8 hours or 10 hours of full course, which is just painfully too long. You don't have that much time to watch that much content with me live coding everything and even I don't have that much time to code that project this way. I better spend my time on shooting smaller videos on YouTube for free instead of spending all month or something to shoot and then edit and then publish. So after four months of procrastination I decided to just publish that GitHub, show you that in a demo video and explain some parts of the code which are more interesting in my opinion. So the initial task is tenant management by administrator. So administrator creates a tenant user, sends the invitation, then subdomain is created automatically for that tenant, then administrator can suspend or delete the tenant, and then tenant admin can invite their own user. So it's kind of team multi-tenancy with permissions. And then the main core of the project is the assets data module. So some kind of asset management. The client didn't really specify what would be the fields, but we just came up with those as listed. Also, every asset can add images, documents and notes and also group and subgroup. And that's it. Let me show you the final demo. So this is the landing page, which redirects to login automatically. And if I log in as admin, I have tenant management and I can create a tenant. For example, John with johnsmith.com and domain John, which would correspond to john.project3.test in my local. And I hit create and the email should be sent to that John. As you can see that domain. So in my mail trap, I have an invitation for John Smith and let's copy that link. Let's log out as admin and let's accept the invitation. I need to create a password, send, and then I'm logged in as a tenant or tenant admin. And then in my own tenant, I can add users. I can add the roles, for example, I don't know, bookkeeper, bookkeeper, and then permissions for asset create, for example, like this. And then I can add a user. So create a user, Jane, Jane Smith com for example role tenant user or bookkeeper so I can send the invitation this way and then I can create asset groups for example group one parent group is none and then I can add a subgroup group two within the parent group one something like that then I can manage assets, images, documents, and notes. And probably one of the main functionalities of all of that is all those assets, roles, documents, and all of that are scoped by tenant. So every tenant sees only their own data and not other tenants' data. Now, the code is available on GitHub as usual, and let's take a look at more interesting parts of that code. First thing I wanted to show you is invitation of the tenant. So in the routes, in the route group of administrator, I see the tenants controller as route resource. And if I get into that tenants controller, there is a create form for a new tenant and the store is the method that I wanted to show you. So what is happening here? We create a new user, then we attach the role of tenant admin, then we create an invitation route for specific user and that invitation is an actual route. If we go back to web PHP, this is the route. So user is a parameter of it. Then we notify the user, the just created user with invitation and invitation is a notification class of Laravel notification system. 
we pass the URL, we accept it here, so this is the URL parameter, it is accepted in the construct and becomes a private property of that notification class. And then when we send the mail, we use default Laravel syntax for mail message, and this is the button for accepting the invitation with the URL. The result of that, if we go back to mail trap, is this one. So accept invitation button and the link looks something like this. So invitation with signature. If you want to read more about Laravel signed routes, I will link that in the description of this video. And then accepting of the invitation, if we go back to the web, tenant controller invitation, so that's accepting the invitation, we check. If we don't have valid signature, this method is a part of that signed routes functionality, or the password is set already, which means approved user, then we abort with unauthenticated code. Otherwise, we log in the user and redirect to home. An interesting part, we are redirecting to the password setting page until the password is set. So in the web PHP, there is a password controller and password controller store. Remember the page when I set the password. And we have a special middleware in app HTTP kernel file. In the middleware, in the web group, in all the pages, we check for password. Is it set or not? We go into that middleware and inside of that middleware we check. If it's logged in user, but we don't have the password set yet, and if any URL is not the password, then we redirect to password create page. Which basically means that whatever URL the user is loading in their browser, they will be redirected to set your password until they set the password. Next thing I wanted to show you is how to suspend the user. So in the tenant management table for administrator, there is a button suspend. And what does it do? It calls the URL the route of tenant suspend. And if we go to that controller and that method, we search for tenant and then we update that is suspended is true or false. So it's basically a toggle on off. And then if we get back to app HTTP kernel, we have another middleware, which is active on all pages, which is check for suspension. So if we click that, we check. If user is suspended, we log out. With error, your account is suspended. So I can suspend that user and then that John Smith won't be able to log in, but at any point I can resume and unsuspend them. Next thing I wanted to show you is deleting of the tenant. And in the original Upwork description, it's delete tenant and all their data. And a tricky part here that we're using soft deletes here. So in all the database table, that's my personal practice, just in case I'm using soft deletes everywhere. So there's deleted at field on the users table. But the rule is whenever we delete the tenant, we need to delete all their users by tenant ID. How to do that with soft deletes? And for that, there is a specific package. I will show you the result on GitHub. As a commit, it will be easier to follow. So in Composer JSON, we use a package Laravel Cascade Soft Deletes. Then there is a new relationship, tenant users. And then in the user model, we need to use Cascade Soft Deletes trait. And we need to specify Cascade Deletes Array. So which relationship names we need to soft cascade delete. And they will all be set with deleted at field. And also one more thing, since domain is unique, we can delete the tenant, but maybe that domain should be available again for other tenants. Maybe they will come back or something. So we update the domain name to something random like deleted and timestamp. And all the other parts of that application is mostly CRUDs, so tables of data with creating and editing the records. And we are using datatables.net JavaScript package on that. But on top of that, we're using Laravel server side data tables package. So you can take a look at the code and learn how to use the data table with server side rendering to handle bigger amounts of data. So this is data tables query. And then in that query, you can override the columns. So column may be a separate view of data tables actions. You can edit any column for more conditions. You can have raw columns or in another example on GitHub, for example, column search is an interesting part. So for every column, you may specify the search field and then that search should be activated in 
JavaScript, jQuery for data tables. So all of that you will find inside the code. I won't stop on explaining that. I actually have a separate course on data tables in Laravel. I will link that in the description if you want to check that out. Or all of that is of course available in our admin panel generator at clickadminpanel.com so you can also use that. But if you want just the code, the GitHub is available for you. And also if you have ideas for more demo projects, what we can create for you and explain and shoot a video and put on GitHub, also use the comments and see you guys in other videos.